Listen, this is a crazy little stretch week for me. I got to take my son on a field trip to Nassau, which is really cool. I'm, a, I'm excited to go see that. I've never been to NASA before. Uh, that's Thursday. It's an all day event stuck on a bus with little nine year olds. My cool. kid's cool. I'm not sure about other people's kids. I'm not right. gonna lie. I did the whole bus trip to a Jaguars game with my youngest this year, and, and I won't ever do another one. Yeah. That's, I know this is going to be the best time I never want to have again. Yeah. Lesson learned. Um, <laughs> yeah. Lesson, lesson learned in advance. <laughs> but tomorrow I'm closing on the house that we're moving the company into, which nice. is cool. And yeah, it's just a busy week, but there's something that I, I wanted us to talk about. And that's what are the differences between people that say they're going to do all these massive improvements in their life? And the people that actually follow through and actually get the shit done. All right. Yeah. There's so many people. And I'll tell you right now, if you want to just go through a timeline and go through, let's say the end of December and the first two weeks of January, all you're going to see is, oh, I'm going to do this year. I'm going to do that this year. I'm going to lose this weight. I'm going to double my business. But you know what? I'd say 95% of those never do shit and they always stay the same. And here's why they're stuck in the same habits and they're not becoming who they need to become. Yep. All right. Let me do new year new me, bro. It's a a a pandemic. Yeah. But the the new year is factual. The new you is up for interpretation. That's right. Okay. And so the reality is if you want to do these things, lose weight, double your business, double your income, you have to act like that person that is actually doing it in the future. Okay. If you have a million dollar business and you want to go from a million dollars to $2 million a year in revenue or profit, whatever it is. Okay. The person you are is good enough to get you to a million dollars. Right. What are the habits that you need to bring on? What are the things that you need? How do you have to act? How do you have to dress? What habits do you have to add on to your routine? that will allow you to become the CEO of that company that is doing $2 million. Okay. Is it you getting into the office a half hour earlier or an hour earlier? Is it you working out every day to have higher energy levels through the day? Is it you reading 10, 20, 30 pages a night of a book that, Hey, maybe you might be weak in. Okay. You have to act as who you want to become. And if you don't understand that you're never going to get there. So yeah. Keith, tell me what your thoughts are on, on this. I do. We see it every January 1st through January 12th at the gym where I joke and I'm like, dude, it's my favorite time of the year to go to the gym because I get to see all the new gym shit, the new gym shoes, the new gym clothes, the equipment. Yep. And then I know what I want to go buy. Right. And it, it allows yep. me to skip going to Dick's or the Academy to look. And I get it all gets brought to me and then it disappears. Right. Yeah. So I often sit back and wonder why that happens. Like, why does someone deci- make this decision? I'm going to get healthy. And let's stick to that one because that's not like the most overused one. Yes. They go spend a thousand bucks at the store on all new shit for excitement. Then they yep. go to the gym for 12 days and then fucking see you later. They never come back. And I often think, okay, why the fuck does a human do that? What what physically happens in their internal thought process that gets them through that regimen? And I honestly think it's not because they're lazy. I think it's because they add so much new stuff to their plate that they get overwhelmed and they just physically can't sustain all of it. And so I'm going to I'm going to start a better diet. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to read a book. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And I think that's why so many people, 75 hard, for example, why do so many people fail that? It's because there's so much new shit in that program that they have to do daily that they can only sustain it for so long. And then the easiest thing for them to do is give up. Dude, this has been, and then this is 2024, right? So this has happened a gazillion times. And every year it's the same thing. A small percentage of people make the commitment and pull through. The rest of the people fall off and and just go right back to their normal mediocre bullshit, right? And that's, when I say bullshit, not to be a dick about it, but the reality is 
they just go back to being who they were because it's easy and, it's and consistently staying in the regimen of the working mm -hmm. out or the this or the that it, it's too challenging and they give up. So I think the one thing that allows the one percenters, I don't know what you want to call them, mm -hmm. is mental fortitude, right? The ability to wake up and know it's going to suck. No, you just got to take them out and know that if you just continue to put one foot in front of the other, you're going to get to the finish line. It may not be the prettiest. You may not get the all the results you were looking for, but I guarantee you one thing. The results you do get are going to be a thousand percent more than what you would have got if you just stayed in the same lane you were in. Yeah. So we talk about it all the time. What are your goals? Talking to our employees and shit all the time. What are your goals? What are your aspirations? I'm like, pick one thing, pick one thing and own it. Don't worry about all the other shit because it's the other shit that's going to pull you away from the one thing. Mm -hmm. So when we have these goal setting meetings, it's, oh, great. You're aspirational and you want to do a bazillion things with your life. What's the one thing we can do today to take two steps forward? And then let's focus in on that thing. And once that becomes a daily part of your makeup where it's no longer you having to go physically try to do it. It's just what you do. Then you add the next thing. Yeah. So let's go to your weight loss example. If I want to be healthier, <clears throat> I need to figure out, <clears throat> sorry, what I am doing now and then figure out what I need to add or change or subtract to actually hit that target. So if I'm going to be working out, right, think about it this way. Let's just say I know nothing about working out. I'm going to hire a trainer and probably a dietitian, right? I'm going to commit to going to the gym five times a week. And then I'm going to stick to the meal plan that is outlined. And if I do those three things, as long as I stick to those three things, and that's not overkill, I should get those results. That's right? overkill for 99% of the people. Got it. And what Keith's saying, let me spit this back to you, is... Maybe you start by just going to the gym five days a week. And then the next thing you would add on is probably the most important part, a dietitian or someone or, or meal plan service. Correct? Yeah. I would and say you, you can go way days. more basic than that. Start okay. by drinking a gallon of water a day. Yep. And if you really want to be fancy, my buddy Jonathan over there has got a $975 <laughs> Nitrogen water bottle. <laughs> I was no, told it made. I it's was told gonna make it me certain, oh, no, no. It, I was told it makes certain parts of me grow. Okay. Well, then I need three of them. Can you ship yes. me three of them? It right. It, yeah, I will. it works. It can now fit in the bottle. Yeah, I bet. Okay. Yeah, when we and yeah. the lie detector determined that was a lie. <laughs> Definitely. It. No, but that's what I'm talking about, right? So most people. And, I, and I'm, I don't, I know you were an overachiever and have the ability to sustain. That's why you went with those three ideas, right? Yeah. 99% of the people can't, that's too much. So just think about it. Let's completely change the way you're eating and have been accustomed to eating for 42 years in my city, my case. Yeah. Do you know how hard it is to not, if you have a sweet tooth at night or if you have a, a, a restaurant you want to, whatever, how hard is it to change your diet and stay consistent just by changing your diet? That is a motherfucker for anyone who has ever went from bulking to cutting and knows yes. the difference in the two major diet differences. Mm -hmm. It's a lot, right? It is. That's why diets are a scheme, in my opinion, a fucking a money pit. Because people keto diet and this diet and that diet, da, 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 right? But what if you can simplify it a little bit more and just start by drinking a gallon of water a day? I think a lot more people would be able to do that. Yeah. And so guess what happens then? You get to check that box. Man, I've been drinking yes. water and I lost five pounds. Holy shit, I feel better. What's next? So brother, brother, I'm with you. I'm with you. But here's what I want to point out. You said I'm an overachiever. Results would probably say that. But I will tell you 100%, I am one of the, I'm not an overachiever. It's will, not skill. And yeah. so here's the difference though. Over the years, I have conditioned myself that if I make a promise it to myself that I'm going to do something, 
I have gotten very good at doing it. That doesn't mean I do it all the time. In fact, some of my worst days are the days that I actually didn't uphold or keep that promise to myself. Right. But I've conditioned myself to do it. So when I say I'm going to do 75 hard, or I say I'm going to do something in business, or I commit to learning something, I know that is the only path forward, and that's it. Yep. And a lot of people haven't actually taken the time to condition themselves to do that. So what we think, me and you think, is ex- people would say is extreme. It's just normal and commonplace. And it's commonplace because I've conditioned myself that no matter what, even if I don't feel like it, I'm going to do it. And that's one of those things that a lot of people are missing. Yeah. And think about it. If I'm saying I'm going to become somebody that is I'm at 250 pounds, and I say I'm going to become someone that is jacked and shredded, and I need to get to 190, those are the things I'm going to implement. But I think your ability to get to the place where you are, where that is a consistent piece, was repetitions. Yes. Like I think back when I didn't work out to, to transitioning to working out, to your point, now those days where I don't work out are like sick days. I don't, yeah. shit doesn't go right. I don't feel right. A lot of things are unaligned for the rest of the day. Yeah. It wasn't always like that because it, at some point you go from not doing something to doing something, then it becomes second nature. Yes. Right. And that's the point I was trying to make of like, I think people get caught up in changing so much at one time right. that they can't keep hold of it. What if we broke it down into real simple, digestible things that you may not see extreme results because you're only doing a component of it. Yeah. Do one component and then stack another. And ultimately then you wake up and you're like, Oh, it's not so bad. Yeah. It's not so bad. And and I think the question being, how do you really become the person you want to become? It's not by putting yourself in a fucking cup and juggling it up and spitting it out on the table and figuring it out. It's, Taking things that you know you can control, controlling the controllable, mm-hmm. and adding one or two things that you know you can be consistent at. Absolutely. And that's it. Consistency is the big differentiator. Your ability and willingness to just commit and stay. Yeah. And it's not always going to be pretty. There's days in the gym today, like today, for an example, I, I felt off because my diet sucked over Easter weekend and I was super mm-hmm. weak in the gym this morning and I was like well I bench pressed 405 last week it wasn't shit today I could barely get 365 what the hell is going on yeah it's not that I'm now all of a sudden that much more weak of course I wasn't aligned in all my shit over the weekend and you pay for it yeah you know what I mean? cool. yeah yeah so I it, that parlays into business yeah it does in a major way and people don't realize that if you are right. fit and you're in shape, you're going to have more energy throughout the course of the day. Now, so let's role play this for business, right? If I was going to change how I am as an operator, I would start by trying to figure out where I want to go, where are my goals, okay? And then you have two choices. You could be very self-aware and figure out where you're weak, and you could either work on where you are personally weak or you can hire for. Okay, so let's say marketing is not my strength. Okay, and I know that I need to increase my marketing and lead gen by 50% so I can double my business this year. I'm either going to be focusing all of my time, effort, and energy on learning how to do that, or I'm going to be hiring someone and bringing them onto my team that can do that monitoring that closely that handles the lead gen portion now are there other things yes what is the operator or ceo that i want to become what time are they coming in if i'm coming in right now at 8 30 and i can't get everything done then i need to come in a little bit earlier maybe at eight o'clock so then i have to commit to an extra half hour a day which is an extra 200 it's an extra two hours and 30 minutes a week of dedicated time where I could put into this in addition to hiring somebody to, to learn and what other habits can I adapt? So it's going through seeing what you're currently doing, seeing right. where you're weak and what do you need to do to get your business to double? And so 
It's not, it's finding out those habits and committing to those habits and then checking in at the end of every week or every month. Hey, I made these changes. What are the results? What do they look like? Right. And if, if it was working, what would those results look like? And if they look like they should, great. And if not, what other habits do I need to bring to the table to be able to get my business to 2X? Yeah. Well, to your point, dude, 30 minutes a day, mm -hmm. like a, a month and a week, a month and half a week extra of work yeah. in the entire year. Yep. So I, I, th I don't think people realize how fucking much more growth, 30 minutes a day, yes. small number creates over a long period of time. Compound interest, the yeah, same you know. shit that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Make a small adjustment and stay consistent and then see the major impact it's going to have. Yeah. And I think just people have great marketing companies, Nike, right? All these companies market new shoes, new helmet, new this, new that, show up at the gym. 14 days of being consistent at the gym is going to get you a little bit of muscle soreness and some sweaty clothes to wash. Yeah. But it's not going to change your body mass index. No. It's not going to give you the shit you think it's going to give you in 14 days. Yeah. Now, what this will... Same. Yeah, because you quit, right? We give yeah. up. We don't see... Yeah. And I love my wife, but she's very much so this person. Mm -hmm. I want immediate results. I want them now. I don't want to wait. I don't want, I don't want to put the work in. I need to know that if I eat a salad today, I lose eight pounds tomorrow. Right. And that's her. And she's growing out of that. She's starting to understand that it's small little things daily that I decide on make massive impacts over the course of 30 days. Yes. Same thing goes into business. Find me a business guy that started his company up and Monday and was a fucking billionaire by Thursday. But the shit just doesn't happen. Right. If look at all the people before us. Alex Hermosi, Andy Frisella. N name any big figure individual that we all look up to and, and listen to. They all slept on the fucking floor and they got their faces punched in and they got fucking beat up yeah. and fucking 20 fucking years of just getting up and fighting through the resistance every day. Now you go down to your garage and you got 94 fucking exotic cars and they're like, I made it. How'd that happen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Overnight it's, success. It, it must be nice. It must be nice. So the commonality, right? The denominator, common denominator in all of this is refuse to fail. And if you just show up, it doesn't, you don't have to show up and be prime time and hit a home run every time you're at bat. There's a lot of days where I strike out. You strike out. Everyone has a shitty day. But it's not the day. It's what are your, what are you going to do tomorrow? You gonna show the fuck back up and give it another shot, or are you gonna shut it down? Nah, I can't do this business anymore. It's no longer right. gonna serve me. I, I'm gonna go back to. We, we say it all the time, dude. I, uh, how many times a week do you say "fuck this"? I'm going to work at McDonald's. Uh, three, four times a week. Uh, I'm three or four times a day. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's like, it's a daily struggle. You know what I'm saying? But that's just one of those things that we make a joke out of knowing that literally I would quit right now and go to fucking McDonald's, but I know yeah. in five years it's, it'll be worth it yeah. or, or whatever the milestone is. So I, I think the sake of all of this is, so it just goes back to, to don't put too much on your plate. If you're looking to make the change, just start somewhere, pick a little task, set yourself up for success, not failure. I don't care how easy it is. Yeah. And, and or to continue on with your point, Keith, think about it from a business perspective. If you don't want to make all these sweeping changes, but you you have a self assessment that, Hey, you're bad at marketing. You need to spend more time in the office. And let's say there's two other habits that you want to adopt. Well, guess what? The first thing, the, the easiest and the controllable piece is you coming in a half hour early. So you do that for a week or two, you get used to it, and then you start picking up a book on marketing if you don't want to hire somebody. And if you do want to, if you do want to hire somebody, then you go out 
and you go ahead and you do that. But if there's these four things that you have to implement one, make sure it's good. It's going to, it's thick or sticky, or you're doing it no matter what, implement the next one, make sure it's sticky. Once you have those two things going for two, three weeks, implement the third, repeat the process and then implement the fourth. And now all of a sudden in four, maybe six weeks time, depending on how many things that you have to add to your schedule or things that you might have to remove. Maybe you, you shouldn't check emails. You should have somebody do it or do it twice a day. Okay. Whatever those habits are, once you implement them and they're all done, now you are that CEO that is going to double their business as long as they stay on the path. So now you just have to stay consistent with those four things, constantly evaluate the results of those four things and see if you're going to add anything, at least so you're on your way. Right. right. And this is what you, it means. Understand who you're becoming. What are those habits that you need to take you, your business, your team to the next level? That's what matters. That's what you need to identify. And then you have to have a rollout plan that you know you can stick to. And then you just execute on that plan no matter what. Anything else you want to add to that? No, I think it's great, man. Just start small. A snowball effect. Start microscopic. There you go. Build. You guys heard it here, guys. Do us a favor. Leave us a review. Send this to someone that needs to hear it. That's the only thing we'll ever ask you guys. Appreciate Unless it's guys. a bad review. Don't leave bad reviews. Keep that shit to yourself. Only yeah. good reviews. <laughs> yeah, fuck out of here with the bad reviews. All right? No, we're just fucking around. Give us feedback. Tell us what you want us to cover, and we'll catch you on the next one. Appreciate everybody.